Good morning. I just washed my hair. A little bit of flat. What do you think of my new coat? Decided after about 15 years I was going to treat myself to a new coat. This is one of uh, Charlie Munger's tips and Warren Buffett's tips to getting rich. Deferred gratification. Never buy a new coat today if you can buy it next week. What my mother's generation called make doing men. Anyway, how are you? How are you? I know we haven't spoken for a while. I'm not going to apologise. I'm not going to apologise for not having done any videos. I've been busy. So you, I'm sure you have as well. I uh, got this <coughs> colossal pain in my left arm. I was lying in bed one night on my right side and my left arm all of a sudden felt like it was going to fall off. Honestly, I've never been in so much pain. Well, apart from when I had two things. So, I have this real searing, burning pain in my left arm. Felt like my arm was on fire. So, and here's a quick salutary lesson, right, in why the NHS doesn't work, isn't working. I had a word with the first person I came across, who's a chat uh, as a podiatrist at the centre where I work, and he said to me, what you need is a uh, naproxen, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. It's only available on prescription. It's like a supercharged ibuprofen. So he said they give it to me for my knees, you know, because he's a big lad and he's had problem with the pain in his knees. So I start my quest to get some naproxen. So. I ring the doctor's surgery and they've got an answer phone on saying that we only, we don't take phone calls anymore, we do this e-consult, which should be a sort of an e-triage thing, but it's not. They're, they actually themselves believe that it's like a, a consultation on the phone. Now, a consultation on the phone to me involves some sort of interaction, but the e-consults are not an interaction. They're, uh, you write down what you've got, what your symptoms are, what you th think you'd like, and um, they send you an email back, usually the same day, from a no reply at email address, totally anonymous, you don't know who's who it's come from, could have come from the cleaner at the practice hall, you know, and uh, you're not allowed to then, uh, you know, feedback and say, no, I'm sorry, you got the wrong end of the stick, or you didn't understand that, or blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, what do I want? I said, I want some naproxen and some pain relief, by which I meant some decent pain relief. Because I was taking the usual paracetamol and my boot friend, alternating every two hours, and it really wasn't, wasn't doing anything. So they said, right, you know, you've got to go and see a physiotherapist. So this is classic deflection, you know. Get your waiting list down by sending the patients to see someone who, uh, some... Uh, what they call auxiliary auxiliary worker. So I then so I then got an appointment with this physiotherapist at the end of the week who looked at me. I had to drive all the way, you know, like 20 mile round trip to see this physiotherapist. He looked at me and he said, I don't know why you've been sent to me, you know, you need some pain relief. You're in a lot of pain. I said, Yeah, I know I am. So he said, I'll make a note on your on your records. And he said Tell your doctor to um, read read your record. No, you know tomorrow because I'll 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 tell them I've seen you and I know what's going on and and to back up your request for some decent painkillers and and some uh, steroid type relief because it's a trapped nerve, right? Let's just concentrate on the junction of death number two. I've got a C6 trapped nerve in my neck. So, and it's it's all the way down to giving you a numb thumb. So at least I know a lot more about the median nerve than I ever did. So, in the meantime, I thought I'll ring NHS 111. 
So I rang that and they said, actually, that's online as well now. So I do this big, long questionnaire, got asking some, some, some semi-intelligent questions about the problem. And they then said, uh, we need to refer you to a pharmacist for some pain relief. And I'm like, okay, good. So the pharmacist rings up and says, uh, you know, well, he said, what, what do you need? I said, I need some naproxen. He said, oh, we, we can't uh, prescribe naproxen. He said, but I can give you some like headaches extra or something. And I'm like, no, okay, thanks. Sorry to waste your time, blah, blah, blah. So I then go down to, um, I'm at, I'm at A&E with my wife. She went in there for some uh, outpatient uh, visit. So I said to her, I'm just going to pop along to A&E and see if I can get someone to prescribe me some naproxen and some cocodamols or something. Because all of the painkillers that we used to rely on in my youth, the DF-118s and the cocodamols, and the, they're, all, um, they're all off prescription now. <coughs> you can't. You know, it's all, everyone's got to, everyone's got to take paracetamol. Paracetamol is the drug of the, it's the only drug now for pain control. Even though it's patently not good enough and it's got a very, very low therapeutic margin. In other words, you've only got to take two, three, four more than you need to and you will kill yourself. You'll just kill your liver. So it's a terrible drug. And everything that's uh, got uh, codeine in it, for example, has got paracetamol in it as well. So you can't overdose yourself on codeine because you, you, you'll kill yourself with the paracetamol before you overdose on the codeine. And the codeine, the cocodamols that you can buy over the counter, they say, if you take more than three of these, then you're going to be a, 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 a drug adult junkie who's sleeping in a skip. So don't take more than three. So they give you a packet of 24 and they're like, right, okay, well, what do I do with the other 21? Anyway, um, I sat down there in some airless bunker for about half an hour and asked them how long it's going to be and they said uh, two hours, two hours. So I said, oh, I can't wait two hours. I was in too much pain to be honest. Like I just sitting there was painful. I was only pain free when I was lying down or sitting in a chair that supported my uh, shoulder. So I said, I'm not, I'm not going to wait two hours. So, so I went with them. My wife was hanging around as well, so we, we then went back. So we then did another e-consult to the practice and said, look, okay, have you read the physiotherapist notes? And all I wanted is some naproxen and some decent pain relief. And uh, I got this snotty email back saying, I'm sorry, uh, you decided not to go and see the physiotherapist. So I then uh, the, went a bit ballistic and I got the email address of the, the actual doctor's surgery and wrote them a snotty email saying that I will, at some point, hopefully, a doctor will read my notes and who knows what's going on and not, you know, say that I haven't been to see the physiotherapist. Bearing in mind, right, that in my desperation, I'd already paid the best part of 100 quid for two private physiotherapy visits before I even got to see the NHS physiotherapist. So, so to, just to sum up quickly, we've got two e-consults, one 111 online consult, a pharmacist visit, a trip to Dover, a physiotherapist wasted time, and finally I got a doctor's appointment about 10 days after. But in the meantime, they did write me a prescription for naproxen because of my, my obviously pissed off email to them directly saying that I'm fed up with this you know so so I got my naproxen and then immediately things started to calm down a bit and then when I went to see the doctor he prescribed me something else I should know what it is it's some it's something for it's a monoamine oxidase inhibitor it's one of those drugs that is prescribed for depression but also miraculously cures uh, cures neurogenic pain, and uh, it's not tegretol, is it? It's yeah, amitriptyline, amitriptyline. And so, um, I'm like, okay, 
I'll give it a go. He said they'll zonk you out, you know. So that's all they are. They're just like Valium. They just make you sleep better. But um, I've only been on them for about four days, so God knows. But anyway, the main thing is the pain has started to go away. Now, whether it, it would have gone away anyway, I don't know. But let's just give the doctor the benefit of the doubt uh, that the amitriptyline is, is helping for some reason. Oh, anyway, what a palaver. So my whole point is, my whole point is, right, that people won't wonder why the NHS isn't working. They've got uh, all that, they've got all that overhead, right? All the wages overhead and time overhead. Not to mention my overhead in terms of money spent on private physio and petrol driving to and back to Dover. Um, to, to dispense a course of tablets that was that cost less than a pound, the propsin. You know, just uh, incredible waste, incredible, incredible waste. And the, uh, you know, if I'd actually only been able to speak to someone, a doctor sooner, then I could have been on these tablets from day one. And uh, think of the money and time that would have been saved. But that's how you can have an expensive service that runs badly. How can you simultaneously provide the worst possible service and yet the most expensive possible service? You wouldn't believe it. I let that lorry out there. Did you see that? He was waiting to see what I was going to do. When I signalled I was pulling out, he thought, well, hello, fellow lorry driver. Actually, they bolt around these lorries there um, you can see he's not he's not he's no slouch is he reminds me of an old black and white film I used to see where there was a two lorry firms that were competing with each other that used to drive around at top speed right left turn flight Past the new KFC. Anyway, it's the week before Christmas, and all through the surgery, nothing was stirring. Although I have this morning got an acceptance on a treatment plan in excess of three thousand quid. I'll tell you what we're doing. We're doing, um, obviously we are, we are concentrating now on people who have got more wrong with them. Um, because we've had this long period of very, lack of very basic dentistry in this country. And, you know, built up a backlog of work that requires rectifying. And it requires rectifying by practitioners who've got the skill to do that sort of thing. The sort of the Jimmy Steele's of the world, you know, the advanced restorative guys. And I think you're more likely to find those in the private sector. The NHS is, uh, is a bit scuppered really because they've got a system which is doesn't really reward a dentist for doing high quality, uh, high cost restorative work. And so what they do is they their livelihood depends on them not doing not doing the whole job, you know. Like for example, if someone comes in who needs four crowns up a two one one two, they'll perhaps just try and do two fillings in the teeth, or or even one filling in the teeth. Get out of his way because he's mental. Here he comes. Watch. Here he comes. Echo X-ray two one Hotel Victor Echo. God knows how much that must weigh five tons that lorry. But he's driving it faster than I'm driving this. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, so 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 it turns out that the sort of dentistry I'm doing is for those who've got the money to afford it is becoming a sort of a must-have type dentistry. 
uh, by which I'm talking about a guy who uh, has got um, a treated teeth um, and which are overloaded and so as a result uh, he's worn his, uh, his teeth down uh, chewed his way through his fillings and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him four new front teeth and an upper chrome denture um, I think the total is going to come to just over, over three grand for the whole lot but he came in on Friday I think he was my last patient on Friday and I sent him um, I, I was uh, it was our staff due on Friday so I didn't get a chance to send him his quote but I sent him his quote Saturday and uh, and then first thing this morning, Monday, he's gone for it, you know. So kudos to him, he knows what he wants. Plus kudos to us as well for doing a good, uh, not not selling him, uh, you know, what he's bought, but identifying accurately his worries, his concerns, his needs and his wants. And uh, explaining to him in a way that he can digest easily how we can fix his problem you know that it makes sense if you if you present someone with a narrative about their teeth and you can say yes you know in the same way it was done to me when we had a, I was a joint owner of a property in Canterbury and the guy came round from the council from the preservation department or whatever this property was built in the 1800s and I said to him actually uh, you know it's not in bad nick is it the building and he and he and he looked at me and he hesitated a second and he said well he said if you look up there he said you'll see this and if you look over there he said you can you can see that and he said and a lot of those bits you can see one there but a lot of those bits are all missing and by the time he finished I was in no doubt that First of all, he knew what he was talking about. Oh, and secondly, that my building was a pile of junk. <laughs> to the educated eye, you know, to the educated eye. So he, uh, you know, and I was totally respected. He's, he went up in my estimation after that, rather than being just a bloke who's like a job's worth. He, uh, he ended up being, uh, there we are, me, the friend of the lawyer driver, angry. So, it doesn't make any difference to me. I mean, I'm just going to join the back queue anyway. So I might as well let him out. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely, this is one of these things where it's not a nil sum. Letting him ahead has not delayed me. I've let, I've let him go and I'm still where I am. So that's, that's a win, isn't it? Um, for society as a whole. So, <clears throat> yeah, so I've given him, I've more or less told him the story of his teeth, you know, and you can say, you know, you've got black lines over your crowns and that's because they're metal based crowns and we don't do those anymore, we do ceramics. So we can make, get a much nicer looking job done there. Oh God. Like with those little, black rubber strips I hate those people they're never any good they're an omen of the bad those rubber when they put two rubber things across the road you know your life is going to get worse on a permanent basis for one reason or another whether it's a pedestrian crossing or a roundabout or a, one of those ex pavement extensions that nobody ever treads on but just serves to slow you down uh, make society less efficient anyway yeah so we haven't got many people booked in this week where um, I don't, it's probably only got about six people booked in for the entire week but then you see now I've got this bloke who wants to come in and he'll be keen to make a start on uh, I'll get him in and take some first impressions because we use special trays for crowns and dentures and uh, I could do that this week then I've got a friend who needs a root treatment who's driving all the way from 
High Wickham uh, to have a molar root treatment done in one go. So we're going to have to get him booked in today. Oh, the old week. It soon fills up, you know. And then uh, if uh, we do have some time free, then I'll, I'll upload this video. Uh, plus a few others that I've got on the back burner. Let's free up some memory on my phone. Right, lovely. Well, it's been lovely to talk to you again. As you can see, the weather is very autumnal. The leaves are off the trees now, pretty much. And uh, coming up to 400 podcasts soon. So I might try and do something special for the 400th one. We'll see, we'll see. I'm not going to promise anything. So there's no point promising stuff. You create an expectation, don't you, in people's mind. And then they get disappointed when you fail to deliver. So, so forget what I just said. Anyway, I'm going to go in. Nice to talk to you again. All right, bye.